And so today I'm gonna to talk about just, you know, five asset classes that you can use to either exercise your money or to give your money a job. And I'll give an analogy for both in the different asset classes that I mentioned and try to compare them to what it would look like if it was an exercise or what it would look like if it was a job. And so the first one I wanna talk about is a savings account. Now, most people have a savings account or at least they have a checking account and some of those checking accounts or savings accounts may actually provide you with an interest rate in order for you to make a little bit of money off of the money that you hold in your account. However, a savings account or a checking account that may provide interest, it's more like taking a walk when you think about it as far as exercise. Or maybe it's a minimum wage paying job or an entry level job that maybe you get fresh out of high school or, or maybe even fresh out of college. And so it's not a well paying job, but it is something, it's better than not having a job at all. Just like if you were to take a walk, it's better than not doing any exercise at all. Having a savings account is something that you should have at the very minimum for your emergency fund. But if you have additional money as well and you're not willing to risk it, you're not willing to take those extra steps, that extra effort, like maybe taking a jog or going for a run, then a savings account is something that you should put your money in. But if you want to make a little bit more money off of your savings, off of the additional cash and put that money to work a little bit harder, then you can invest in bonds. Now I would consider bonds like going for a light jog on a regular basis or having a steady salary that's not minimum wage, but not yet something that you would want to stick with for your career. And so with bonds, while they don't provide a lot of growth, like the next topic that I'm gonna talk about in this video, but they do provide a steady income in the form of coupon payments. And so when you purchase a bond, it'll have a specific percentage that is called a coupon. And that's essentially what you're paid every six months, depending on how often that specific bond pays out its coupon payments. And on average, that's probably three to 5% that you can make from the bond. Now, if you wanted to take a step up, maybe you would wanna go on a light run, you know, running a little bit faster or maybe jogging on more of a regular basis. Or if you wanna get that steady nine to five that has a good salary, a good middle income, then you might wanna get into alternate investing like with real estate investing. Now, if you think about real estate, if you were to rent out your home, you would get steady income each month from the person who's living in that home. And more than likely, they're probably not gonna move very often, especially if you have a nice home that you're renting out. It's in an area with good schools and there's a lot of amenities in that area. And more than likely, many families aren't gonna be moving every year. So you can essentially count on that income every month for maybe years to come. But of course, like with any job, even if it is a steady nine to five with a good company, or even if you are running on a regular basis, normal exercise, it doesn't mean that you could not lose that job or you could hurt yourself when going for that run and that could stop some of your income. But real estate investing and investing in other alternative investments is a good next step and a higher consistent pay that you would get from real estate investing than you might with bonds. And so the next step up, is stock investing. Now stock investing would be like playing a sport consistently. You know, there are many different sports that you could play from playing table tennis to actual real tennis on a court or playing basketball, playing football, maybe even playing rugby. There's a wide variety of different sports that you could play. And of course, depending on the sport that you choose, there could be a, a higher or lower level of activity. And so you can think of that just like the stock market. There are so many different stocks available for you to invest in. Some may have large growth rates that are more consistent, while others may have lower growth rates that are aren't as consistent or maybe they are consistent and they pay a dividend each month and that dividend could be low or it could be high. But there are so many different things or so many different companies to choose from in the stock market that you can find the right stock or the right sport for you to play within the stock market. And when comparing it to the job market, it could be like a, a high paying job or it could also be a lower paying job, but you know that the job is gonna be there. It's with a very reputable company. You know that your job security is good. And so so maybe you accept lower pay for the job security, or it could be like a high growth sales company where you could get really high growth, you can make a lot of money, but there's also the chance that 
maybe you get fired because there's a low retention rate with that job, or that if you don't meet your sales goals, then you don't make as much money and you don't get that growth as well. And so with the stock market, there's a wide range of possibilities on how much money you can make from the growth of the stocks that you own or how much money you can make from the dividends that a company would pay if you were to hold that stock. And the next major asset class, which is gonna be a major asset class for us in the future, it wasn't something that even existed over 20 years ago, and that's cryptocurrencies. Now with cryptocurrencies, there are a large, a wide variety of different types of cryptocurrencies. Most people know the main, the larger cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or even Dogecoin, even though it was you know made as a joke, it is something that is very popular and a lot of people have invested in. But also with cryptocurrencies, you even have stable coins, which essentially mirror the US dollar and you can actually earn a high growth rate, a higher rate that you would earn from a traditional savings account from you know, one of the big four banks or, may, or other financial institutions, which at best you may be able to get a 3% interest rate. And there are some savings accounts that I've reviewed in the past that you can check those out. But with owning a stable coin as a cryptocurrency, you can actually earn up to 8% by holding a stable coin instead of holding USD and essentially have the same level of risk that you would have when holding your cash in your savings account. But on the other end of the spectrum, you could invest in some really super high growth or super high volatile cryptocurrency, which could you know gain 1200% in a month, but it could also lose 90% in a couple of days. And so there's a wide array of potential outcomes, even when investing in cryptocurrencies. And so I would consider this like playing a high impact sport or maybe like an extreme sport. Maybe you're in the X Games, maybe you're rock climbing. These are sports where you could potentially get injured, but they're fun. They may work your muscles more than you know other sports, but you also have that potential of injuring yourself or potentially dying if you're in one of those really extreme sports. Or in the case of cryptocurrencies, you could gain a lot of money or you could lose a lot of money in a short period of time. But if you know what you're doing, and you've done your research and you've done things to protect yourself, then it could be really fun and also very rewarding. And so as far as a job, I'll compare this to entrepreneurship. Most people are gonna fail when they have a, their own business. Over 90% of people fail within the first two years if when they own a business. And so cryptocurrencies would be more like being an entrepreneur and starting your own business. Again, with starting your own business, there's a wide range of possibilities. You could end up being the next Fortune 500 company, or you could always have maybe a mob and pop shop that just you know lasts for the next 20, 40 years, but it never really gets really big. Or you could fail and you could lose your money or potentially get big and then go bankrupt in the near future. You never really know with entrepreneurship. And so as an entrepreneur, you're taking on that risk. You're taking on a lot of risk, especially in the beginning when you're starting off because you don't know for sure how that company could end up and how much money you're gonna make or how much time and effort you're gonna have to put in to make that business work. Now, just like with cryptocurrencies, if you don't even know what a cryptocurrency is or you're just following someone on social media and investing in what they're investing in and not actually taking the, your own time to do the research to learn more about those cryptocurrencies, then you could get in a situation where you could lose money as well. But out of those five asset classes, once you compare them to exercises or maybe even having an active job, there's a wide array of outcomes that could happen depending on what you choose to do with your money. Of course, you want to spread it out you want to be more diversified and have money in all types of different asset classes. Even some of the ones that I didn't mention that would be considered alternate investing, like investing in maybe precious metals like gold and silver, or maybe in, even investing in a startup company, which would then be more in line with the entrepreneurship uh, job or extreme sport method. But in either case, it's good to stay active. It's good to stay active and exercise your money. It's good to stay active and give your money a job. That way you can benefit from it in the future, just like benefiting from exercising on a regular basis, it will be beneficial for your health 10, 20, 30 years from now. So stay healthy and busy by giving your money multiple jobs, giving yourself multiple strings of income, or by keeping a regular varied exercise routine, whether we're talking about your actual body or we're talking about your money exercising. And just like with your body, you never want to overdo it in any particular category. You want to take breaks and you want to 
exercise all of your muscle groups and not over focusing on one muscle group which could then overextend your muscles and you could get injured and hurt yourself that can happen with your money as well all right now that you've watched this video let us know in the comments below how you exercise your money or what jobs you give your money are you putting your money in all of the five asset classes that i mentioned in this video and for the asset classes that i didn't mention where else are you putting your money to help it exercise or to give it a job to do all right thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video i really appreciate it if you're not a current member of the mobile money nation all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below hit the like button because you really like this video and also hit the notification bell so be notified the next time I create a video just like this. Again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.